wider tires are in fact slower than narrower tires. So this is my Wabi Thunder. I usually run 32 millimeter or wider tires on it. What I did was I took the Continental Grand Prix four season tire in a size 32 millimeter and swapped them out for a size 28 millimeter tire, which again was the Continental Grand Prix four season tire. So we just lost four millimeters of width in the tire, same exact tire brand, same exact tire model. Now that wasn't the only thing that stayed the same. The bicycle was exactly the same. The gearing stayed exactly the same. My position on the bike stayed exactly the same. As well as just the overall roads and the routes that I chose, I tried to pick just my normal routes, not go off-road, not tackle a bunch of hills, just normal 10 to 20 mile rides that I routinely do. Now I didn't go too crazy with taking crazy types of power measurements, heart rate measurements, how much caffeine or sleep I had. I'm trying to keep this as casual as possible, but also as realistic as possible. Now riding over rough roads, for example, or riding off-road, the wider tire is going to be faster. Riding up and down silky smooth roads with a lot of hills, obviously the narrower tire is going to be faster. Something else that's gonna make a big deal is the actual tire brand. Is it a race tire or an all season tire like I have for these? Now I always run 28 millimeter tires on my Wabi Classic and it always felt so much faster than the 32 millimeter tires on my Wabi Thunder, the one that you're looking at right now. However, the Wabi Classic is a different bike. It's a tighter geometry. It also has much lighter weight wheels, the Wabi Sub 15 wheels. And I've got the GP5000 race tire in 28s, which make a huge difference. Not only that, the GP5000 being a racing tire has much softer sidewalls, or so it seems, meaning that it is a super smooth rolling bike just because the less sidewall reinforcements a tire has, the easier it's going to be or the more plush it's going to feel over the bumps. Would you believe me if I told you that on my Wabi Classic with those race tires, it actually can feel a lot smoother than this Wabi Thunder did with the 32 millimeter all road training tires. So we got it to be as consistent as possible. What were the results? Well, the first thing that I noticed was these 28 millimeter tires were significantly more jarring and rough riding than their 32 millimeter counterpart. This is a pretty obvious thing to expect, but I didn't expect to feel so much of a difference. What I had to do to combat this was actually lower these tires in 28 millimeters down to 65 PSI. I typically ran 65 to 60 PSI in the 32 millimeters. I was running these at 70 to 75 PSI, and I found that the closer I got to 75, that's when I started to feel a lot of the road chatter and a lot of the vibrations, not in a good way. And once I got below 70 PSI, it started to feel more of that silky smooth, wobby ride quality that I'm so used to. Now that that was taken care of, the bike was riding very smooth once again but I didn't really feel as much of a speed increase or much of a difference at all at first. Now after a few rides, I started to notice that there was a bit of a difference in speed. The bike just had a bit more get up and go. It had better acceleration. It also seemed to, once I got towards my top speed, which is anything above 20 miles an hour, it started to hold that speed better and I found that it was going a bit faster. It was 22, 23, especially going downhill. It held the speed and it gained speed a little bit faster than 32s. With the 32s, it seemed to be they, they didn't like going over 22 miles an hour and it was kind of hard to keep them. They didn't hold speed quite as much. This was not a big difference, but if you're paying attention, it was there. Now I'm mostly riding in stop and go city conditions, so the lower rotational weight of the narrower tire definitely plays a big part when I'm accelerating or even when you're going up a hill, that's when you can really feel it. Narrow tire also means it's more aerodynamic and I'd have to say this is why once the bike gets above 20 miles an hour it holds speed better and it just wants to keep going. But I was pretty surprised at these results so far. Yes, the difference was noticeable, but honestly, it wasn't that noticeable. If I wasn't paying attention to it, I probably wouldn't have noticed. It was a bit more than subtle, but it wasn't that significant. And I really was expecting the narrower tires to be much faster than the wider tires. So for stop and go riding up and down hills in city conditions, yes, narrower tires over a longer ride are going to mean you're gonna be able to go faster when you're actually pedaling at the same consistent power, the same consistent effort. 
Does that mean if you're running 32 millimeter tires, you should swap them over to 28 millimeter tires? That's up to you. You've got to ask yourself, do you want more comfort or do you want more speed? For a majority of people, as long as you're not racing or as long as you're not doing 100 mile rides, if you're running 32 millimeter tires, it's probably not going to be worth it to just chuck the 32s and go to 28s. Now, what I can recommend is as your 32 millimeter tires start to wear out, you can start to think of switching over to 28s if you prioritize a bit more speed for just about the same level of comfort, but you want to actually cover more ground faster. Now we have to take into account tire model and what it was designed for as well. When I was running the 32 millimeter Grand Prix Four Seasons on this bike over last winter, I ended up running the Continental Gator Skin tires, which is a very hardy, robust tire in a size 28 millimeters on my Wabi Classic. And what I noticed was those 32 millimeter GP Four Seasons actually picked up speed and held speed better than the smaller 28 millimeter Gator Skin. The reason being is the gator skin is not designed to be ridden long distances or to be raced. It's designed to have no punctures at all, so it does take a hit when it comes to rolling resistance, whereas the GP4 season is going to be a little bit more friendly, a little bit more of an all-around tire that has better rolling resistance and still pretty decent puncture protection. Let's keep going with that train of thought. If we compare the size 28 millimeter GP4 seasons to something like a Continental GP5000 race tire in a size 32 millimeters, then you're probably gonna get the best of both worlds since that is a race tire. It's going to pick up speed and hold speed really well because those tires have really low rolling resistance, but you're gonna have a bigger tire, so it's going to be a lot more comfortable over rough roads, and you can even take it more off-road since a 32 is more capable on light gravel than a 28 is. But what does this mean for you? Well, I think it just depends on what your priorities are. If you like that snappy feeling of a narrower tire, definitely go with the smallest tire that you can as long as you can put up with that comfort level. So for me, I would never go below 28 millimeter tires. That's what I started road riding on. So to ride down to a 25 or a 23 would just be a little bit too jarring for me. I'm perfectly happy with the 28s. The 32s for me in the GP4 season, they always felt a bit sluggish. And then since you really can't take them on proper gravel, it just seems like a weird compromise between it's not really a fast, super fast road tire. It's not really a proper gravel tire. It just seems like this kind of weird halfway house for pure road riding and even light gravel, something like a GP4 season or even GP5000 in a 28 millimeter width for me is going to be perfect. And then if I actually wanna go out and ride gravel, I'm just gonna ride a proper 35 to 40 millimeter gravel tire. That's what I'd recommend since that's what I'm actually going to be doing. But this also requires you're either going to have to swap out your tires on the regular or invest in a secondary wheel set. That way you can have one road wheel set and one gravel wheel set. Now let's say you don't have the space or you don't have the money, you just don't have the time to have an extra bike or an extra set of wheels. You wanna go super minimal, super simple. At that point, I'd say the 32 millimeter tire is going to be the perfect all around tire. Something like a GP5000, or they even came out with a new model that's supposed to have better puncture resistance and better off-road or better wet weather resistance, or better, better wet weather grip that is, called the GP5000 all season. I think it's going to replace this GP4 season eventually. And what if you wanna have better puncture resistance? Well, there's really three things you could do. Number one, you can choose a gator skin tire and a 32 millimeter width. I wouldn't do this just because I find the gator skin is pretty sluggish in a 28, and I'd have to imagine that a 32 is gonna be even more sluggish. You can go with the race tire with the TPU inner tubes. That seems to be working out for me, but I've only tried it for the past two months, so I can't say I've been doing it for a long time and say you'll never get a puncture. Third option would be go with the tubeless setup. This means you're going to have to keep an eye on your tubeless sealant levels. You're also going to have to clean them out every two to three months. And this can be a pretty messy job. My least favorite thing to do when it comes to modern day bike maintenance. So either way, the choice is up to you. Definitely experiment with which one you feel the most comfortable with and which one is going to be the best for you with the type of riding that you're doing. That's going to do it for this one. Hope it helped. Hope you enjoyed it. And thanks for watching.